Hey guys, today I'm doing a power jack replacement on an MP730 QCJ Samsung laptop. This has the classic symptom of being able to kind of wiggle it in just the right way to make it work, and you can get it to power on and switch back and forth from AC and battery. And the first step here is to remove the legs or the little uh, covers for the bottom screws. And once you've, done, once you've done that, each one has a, a little screw. It's a small thread, uh, not your typical big Phillips. It's kind of a small one. You want to be really careful with these Samsung screws. They're just extremely tiny Phillips. And if you, don't, if you put the wrong type of screwdriver in there, I have a special one. Uh, that I'm using for this thing and if you put the wrong one in there you can easily strip these screws. I've had these come in before with people who have tried to fix them themselves and they have just a strip screwed and then you know it's really hard to get something out once something's stripped because these laptops are so delicate you can't just drill and rivet it, you know something new. And once those bottom screws are removed you can take a pry tool, I use a thin guitar pick just to go around the bottom of the cover to get it to pry up. Take my other hand and Kind of hold it to give it some pressure while I do the guitar pick with the other hand. You want to be really careful with these bottom covers too. Don't want to pull them up, you know, give them too much force. You want to be really delicate when you're removing them. Just trying to go along that top there. Just got a couple little clips that are just getting stuck, so. All right, now that bottom covers off, we have access to all the components inside. And here I'm just removing the Wi-Fi leads. And here I'm going to remove the battery screws. I had to remove that first Wi-Fi lead so I could get a better access to removing the, or detaching rather, the battery cable. All right, so now that I have that battery, uh, all those battery screws removed, it's much easier for me to get a hold onto that battery cable to detach it. And so now I'm just gonna detach some of the cables from the motherboard, it looks like a touchpad, and there's an IO board cable. These just, the connections that hold them into place just flip up and flip down as you can see there. You wanna flip them up to lock them or unlock them and then flip them back down to lock them. But they never come off. Those tabs are just a flip up, flip down, so don't try to remove them. And here I'm removing the keyboard and the LCD cable. That one just pulls out away from the connection and then that other wireless lead. And then just detaching a speaker. And next I'm gonna detach the fan. And now it's time to remove the screws for the fan. And then the fan can be removed.
So now I'm going to start removing some of the motherboard screws. Here I'm trying a different screwdriver. This, some, some of these really take some force, which is not good with such a small little head. And now I have to get out a different tool to try to work this thing free. And you just want to be really careful not to give it too much and strip it. If you strip that motherboard screw, it's a huge pain. Here I'm just going to remove the other ones. Alright, so now all those motherboard screws are removed, the battery or the motherboard can come out. And as you can see, here's that little DC jack that needs to be replaced. So now it's time to desolder that old one and resolder a new one on. Alright, so the first step here is to add some flux to each one of these through holes. I sped the video up a little bit because it's kind of long and tedious, uh, but I wanted to give still give the full look of what's going on. But I'm just adding some flux to each one of these through holes. This is going to help heat up that through hole and get that solder flowing and removed properly. This can be really difficult without flux. You can be pretty liberal with it as you can see with what I'm doing. And then the next step I like to do is to add some solder. Um, this just helps get that through hole heated up and get that solder moving. Uh, if you don't, if you try this without the flux and without adding the solder, that, that solder just does not want to come out of the through hole by itself. So. So next I'm going to take my desoldering braid after I've added the solder and flux and just try to get as much of that solder out as possible. Now this is easier said than done. This kind of takes some experience and some tips and tricks, but I'm using a, a, or like a chisel tip style tip on my soldering iron, which is a uh, Hako FX triple eight D running at about 750 uh, degrees for the temperature. And with that chisel tip, as you can see, those through holes are kind of rectangular, and the chisel tip is rectangular too. So I'm trying to get as much surface area of that chisel tip on that through hole to get it heated up properly. It can be really difficult if you have a, a pointy tip that, you know, sometimes those come with your soldering iron when you buy them. Uh, you know, those are really hard to get that surface area on that through hole to get it heated up properly. So I always suggest upgrading to a chisel tip no matter what iron you're using. Uh, not to say that it's impossible to do with the pointy one. I mean, I did it for uh, for X amount of years, but it's just much, much more difficult to do it with that pointy style tip. And here I just flip the motherboard over and I'm just trying to desolder from the other side. This is a good technique too. Sometimes you know you just want to flip it over and try it on the other side as well. That can really be helpful. Sometimes you don't have good access to it depending on what components are around it or whatever, but uh, this is a pretty good one for that. So here I'm just taking some 99% alcohol, just cleaning that flux off the, the jack area. All right, so there I just put some thermal tape over some of the sensitive components, the surface mount. Um, I'm gonna take my air soldering station here and try to remove it that way. Uh, this, this motherboard is really delicate. It's pretty thin. It's got that pointy tip on that right side there. So, you know, trying to use the iron to desolder more and more of it, you just kind of risk damaging something. So it's a lot easier just to get the hot air out 
and just remove the jack that way and then I'll be able to take the soldering iron and finish up what's left in the through holes. And I put this thing about a half an inch or an inch away from the board. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but I'm running this thing roughly about 400 degrees. And I just got my tweezers on it there so I can see when it's feeling loose and kind of give it a little wiggle, help, help it out. But like, like with whether you're dis desoldering with the air or with the gun, you want to make sure you never force anything. That thing should come out, kind of come out of there on its own. It should almost fall out when you're using the air station, as you'll see here in a second. But as you can see, that solder is starting to flow there. And it's getting ready to come out. And I just try to apply an even amount of heat to each one of those through holes, kind of go back and forth, back and forth to get get that heat distributed properly. And this really just depends, how long this takes depends on the thickness of your board, uh, the type of solder and jack that's being used. Um, I just had an Acer Nitro 5 video that I just did in a tip you know like 20 minutes with this air station and this one is pretty quick so you know you just depends on what temperature you're using how much air you're pushing out thickness of the board etc as to how fast it's going to come but this is a pretty thin motherboard so it comes out pretty easily and now that i have that jack removed i'm going to go back with the flux and get each one of those through holes again and try to start desoldering with the braid And this whole process can be pretty tedious. You might have to add some more solder, add some more flux in between. Um, there's really no set way of doing it. You kind of have to play it by ear. But, but now that I have most of the solder out of there, I can try putting that jack in. And when you're putting that jack in, you want to make sure that it's you know flush and level with the motherboard and it's, that it's fitting in there properly. As you can see in the video here, I tried to put it in, but I took it back out because I saw, okay, there's not enough solder removed from one of these holes. It's not sitting in there flush properly, and the, the pins aren't going properly through that through hole, so that means I need to do some more desoldering. So just trying to get the last bits of solder out of there so I can get that jack in properly. All right, so now we're gonna put the jack back in there. See if it fits properly. And you can still kind of see there, there's still some solder in that back left hole, what it looks like. I'm going to flip it over and try to go at it from the other side. And there I'm just kind of angling that tip to try to get that chisel tip down inside there as much as I can. And here I'm just taking the tweezers and just poking some of that solder out. and that just will not come up in the braid. Sometimes you can take a flat, small flathead or a tweezers and kind of push some of it out. You just want to be extremely careful when you're doing that though. You can easily damage the board if you don't, don't do it correctly. And now, just trying to get that jack to fit in there properly. And here I'm just taking a, some, some cutters or pliers or whatever 
and you just want to take that and put that underneath the jack to make it flush. You can use anything. Um, it's just the handle of those cutters is like the nice kind of the size of a jack. And there I'm just checking to make sure that I have it flush. Uh, you don't want to solder that in and have it go in at an angle. So I'm even having to take my pry tool and put that in there to make sure that thing's flush. Um, and this is, kind of, this is kind of a tricky one. It just does not want to stay properly and you really have to be conscious of that because if the jack is off center you, know, you might get it all you might get it soldered on there fine and it might work fine electrically but then when you get it put back in the chassis you see that you know it's being blocked by whatever x amount of angle and you can't get the charger to go in because it's at an angle so the jack sitting down and now the chassis doesn't allow you to have enough clearance to get the power cord in there so you really got to make sure that jack is perfectly flush Now it looks like I finally have it together. Just gonna add some fresh solder to each one of these through holes on the new jack. Sorry for blocking the camera there. Sometimes these angles are kind of difficult when you're working with your hands, but you know, but you know what I'm doing is adding solder to each one of those through holes. And then here I'm just adding some flux that can just help the solder flow all the way through. It's great for desoldering and soldering, and then add some more heat. Make sure that tip is clean, like I'm doing there. Add some flux. Add some more heat to those solder points. Make sure it's nice and flowed. And then you can go on the other side to check it. And if it's not perfectly well on the other side, then um, I like to add some solder too to both sides. This will really just help strengthen it. But if you can see the solder flowed through from the other side, you don't really need to add any solder from, from the, the bottom. And last step, I'm gonna clean it up with some 99% alcohol, get this thing all nice and shiny, remove that excess flux. And this thing's all set to go, ready to go back in the computer. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment.